In this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at the full game-winning drive by the Miami Dolphins and get inside the mind of head coach Mike McDaniel. So if you ever wanted to know what this process really looks like, where essentially you have an offensive coordinator versus a defensive coordinator, they gotta drive the entire field to win the game, right? If you, if you score, you win. If you don't score, you've lost the game. So it's gonna be four down territory the whole time, right? You basically have to put together a string of consecutive plays that are gonna execute well, right? And, and be able to put you in position to win the game. So this is a really difficult task, and extremely fun to actually analyze and take a look at. So let's jump into the film right now. All right, so here we go. Here's our first play. And essentially what they're going to try and do is a little bit of a bow concept up top. What they're going to have is this little sit outside route, okay? And then we're going to have this wrap right around. So he's actually going to leak back in because uh, he has the option to really work in or out most likely. And then in this case, we just have this dig wrapping over the top. Here we've got more of a clear out and then we have a corner flat, right? And this is a pretty safe first down throw, right? This is the start of the drive. You want to try and take something easy, but it ends up not working out too well because what you have is you have issues with pressure. You're going to see this on the first two plays of this drive where conceptually everything is fine, but they screw up the pressure. And actually Tua does a really good job. He gets the snap. He's looking over here. He's probably waiting for this corner to win because this is a good matchup. But if we get pressure, we have somebody in our face here. We just have to get to our check down immediately. Right, so he does a really good job taking this. Ends up not going for anything. The ball gets batted down. So now they're second and 10. No harm, no foul, right? Because the, the play clock has stopped. So they can go ahead and just call another play. Live to play another down here. Now here is the second down play. Okay, second play of this drive. They did this little short motion. You'll see this here where he quickly bounces out. They did this a ton in this entire game. They used this a lot of different ways. They're really crafty. A uh, huge fan of this. And essentially what we have here, again, we have another corner flat combination. And then right here, we have a little bit of a stutter and go. He's just gonna be pressing vertical, run into this space, and then he's jumping into the flats. So again, this is really gonna be a pick your side. You either wanna work right or left. If they had the protection, they probably would've wanted to take this shot play up top, but they end up not having that because again, the same problem, we have issues with protection. So this is something I'm sure they're gonna be working on uh, in these moments of it's five man protection, how many people do we wanna pick up? But again, Tua does a really good job of getting to his check down, okay? It's, it's an accurate ball, it's good enough. Only problem is we got somebody in our face here. Uh, great job by the, by the Chargers defense to really take this away. And luckily that was gonna be an incomplete pass, not a fumble, which terrified me while I was watching the game. And here's the big play. Here's the big play right here. What we're gonna get is a little bit of a glance type of route. So a glance is really kind of a, a, like a slant or a post, but you don't, you don't have any specific landmark you have to break to. You kind of just break to daylight. And then we have a stutter and a wheel, right? So this is gonna be the, the main route that's thrown here. Okay, and then you can see on the bottom here, what they're actually gonna do is give a little bit of a chip. This is also a wild front. Front, You're not gonna get this anywhere outside of the NFL, this crazy type of wide front, but they have a chip before he releases into his route. Okay, and, and the glance ends up falling down. Tua steps up and takes his big shot here. But you can see right now, he's looking, he could potentially hit this glance, but we fall down. Okay, these guys both converge on this. And now we have the one-on-one. -on -one. If he can step up and make the throw, which is what he does, right? That's a massive chunk. That really puts them in position to actually go down and win this game. So see this little jump motion here, quickly popping him out. Now this is just to give a, an idea of why they might do this. This is really beneficial for gaining leverage on a defender, right? And they, they did this a ton. Uh, maybe I'll go back and do another video specifically on this motion. They did this a ton and I don't expect them to stop it. This is actually something I'm gonna steal for sure because this is really nice. But that pops him out here. Look at this very easy, clean pocket, okay? He's able to step up and make this throw on the run. It's a very, very good ball. And then two is just, uh, Tyreek Hill here is just gonna win with speed, okay? You're not gonna be able to beat him in a foot race here. All right, now we're getting down closer inside the red zone. So now they've had their first First run plays right here. They run just a regular inside zone. They do add some some stuff to it, right? It's not a traditional 
uh, inside zone where everybody's staying out and blocking. They have a jet sweep action here to potentially hold and pull any backers out of the box here. So this is a nice way to, to kind of change the box a little bit. And then with zone rules, you can just kind of keep things very simple. What they're gonna do is if you're covered, everybody's step and play side. So essentially, if you watch everybody's first step on the offensive line, it's all gonna be play side, right? Some teams will say, hey, if I'm uncovered, I'm gonna help backside. So in this case, he's uncovered. He doesn't have anyone from his shoulder to the nose of the man next to him, right? So he would help backside in those uh, different rules. But right now they're, they're following just regular rules here. So everybody's gonna be stepping play side and taking what shows up. And then you have your tight end backside slice across and try and kick out or cut this backside C-gap defender. Uh, whoever shows up in the box outside this safety, he's really gonna be irrelevant with this because we're just handed off. He's taking himself out of the play. He's gonna be there for quarterback. All right, we don't have to worry about him. We could just hand the ball off. They do a good job getting up to second level. Uh, and the only thing is we, we just don't have anybody in the blocking scheme for, for any safeties. And essentially number nine kind of becomes that type of role here. We're just, we're just outnumbered in the box at this point. We're not gonna be able to pick up everybody, but you get enough and that's a good chunk right there. So we'll take that. All right, so next play, they're gonna shift out to an empty look. Okay, empty look here, right back to the air. And this is where they're running really just kind of a, you know, a, just a four verticals, right? Seems like a four verticals. We're just gonna cross the safety's face when we're in this situation here. He's gonna be taken off. And then instead of running a Y juke, they're just gonna run a little H juke, right? So he's kind of running a little bit of a stick and then working in, right? This is not a bad guy to be doing this here. You got some speed uh, running these little option routes, but they do a really good job. This, this receiver presses vertical and then bends it across the face and flattens this, right? I want you to understand the angle. He's pressing vertical. If he just runs straight, right? He's not gonna be he's not gonna be open. It's just not gonna work, right? He's just gonna run right into him. You're not gonna be able to throw it. And look at the timing of this. This foot has now hit it's probably seven steps or maybe five steps. Let's go ahead and look. Probably a five step here. One, two, three, four, five. That foot breaks. He's already fired this ball in. It's a flatter route. This is a really good job getting this completion here and putting them in position into the inside the 10 yard line. Now let's take a look at this from the end zone cam here. So this is probably gonna be a big on big protection. Okay, maybe even a half slide because the center's eyes immediately go into the A gap unless they decide that they just wanna help with this side, which is strange. I feel like they probably would wanna help on Bosa over here, but uh, the, you know he handles him quite well. Great job throwing on rhythm again, as I mentioned here. Watch, watch the footwork here, catch, one, two, three. That back foot hits and he's immediately firing. This is one of the best things that, that Tua does, better than anybody else in the NFL. Uh, he is, you know, there's a lot of questions on whether he's an elite QB. With this one particular thing, he is elite, right? That one thing that there's no question uh, whether or not he is one of the best in the NFL to do that. He is great at that. All right, now they get inside the 10 yard line motion in. This is Tyreek Hill, by the way, coming into the backfield. So that's a nice little wrinkle that they've got. Really good if you can use your players in a ton of different ways. And you can put this guy as a number one receiver out here, number two, number three, on the front side, back side, put him at the running back. They actually used him as a fullback earlier in the game. Uh, so they really use him in a ton of different ways. Really, really nice for an offensive coordinator. Uh, and this is one thing that essentially everybody does something like this, right? Essentially what you're gonna have in the red zone is you're gonna have people just flooding across the field, right? So you're always just gonna have this something over here and then everything else is working into the window coming across the field here. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this plays out. You got your fade, mandatory outside release, the flat route, if you have any type of pressure, we wanna get there immediately, we can. He ends up stepping up in the pocket, waiting for these things to, to work across into his vision. And he just slightly misses on the throw here. Okay, just a slight miss. We take a look at it from this view here. Essentially, he's gonna hit his drop and then immediately start to drift. One, two, three, he sees pressure right now. Boom, foot plants in the ground. And then you start to drift to the direction of the side where everybody is already flowing. All of your routes are flowing in that direction. So it'd be best to boot into that direction or to, to peel out into it. Okay, he tries to do that. He has somebody step up. Uh, so he's got to step up into the pocket, but he's going to continue to move afterwards. This is a, a thing. All, all quarterbacks have to be able to do this a little drift. 
and then it's just a little bit of a miss, right? A little bit of a miss here, but this could have been the game winner right here, okay? He's a little bit bummed about it, you can see it. All right, and now we get uh, into this. Here's another version of, you know, you're not calling a run play necessarily, but essentially it's, it is a run play, right? They're in pistol here. They're running this orbit motion with this guy working out and he becomes the lead blocker. And then because this guy is a threat, if he attacks vertical, he's going with it, right? There's no way you can possibly ignore that. And then essentially he's gonna be the lead blocker here and he's running the swing. Okay, now if he gets this block clean, this is the easiest walk-in touchdown that you could possibly have here, right? But he ends up missing the block. He still gains a couple of yards, right? But, but this is a really, really good play call. It just wasn't executed well because they just fell down. Right, but if he executes this properly, this is a walk-in touchdown, genius looking play here. Okay, but it, at least it puts them in position now to actually go down the field and uh, you know take their shot, which they do on the very next play. Also, another important note here: this defensive end is not getting too aggressive in here. He's still kind of playing this, and potentially could get his hand up to tip this down. So one thing with this. It's a mistake that a lot of young quarterbacks will make. They won't put that touch on it. If you watch Tua throw this, he throws this with a little bit of an arc, a little bit of a slight arc with this rather than just lasering it to him, okay? So that's the difference right there between a batted down ball and now we're gonna be second and nine uh, or third and nine versus this third and four situation here. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this last play here. This is the, the big one to Tyreek. Essentially what they have is this little fade that they're just gonna have a little bit of a stutter at the line of scrimmage, catch step, fire. I want you to look at Tua's footwork. It's just a one step, okay? A little jet action opposite to kind of draw the attention to this side. This is another, you know, something that magicians usually do. They always wanna try and, and show you one thing and then do something else, right? Offensive coordinators love doing that as well, okay? That concept applies in both worlds right here it's just a catch step fire anytime you have a db whose back is turned to you it's a really good opportunity to, to catch a fade the one thing that is pretty interesting is tyree kill is a small guy right he is not a very tall receiver and generally fades are best with taller guys right he's just so freaking athletic that he makes this look real easy okay it's just it's just a great release off the line nice little jab inside then he takes off gets the leverage a lot of room to the outside Tua throws a great ball, easy touchdown here. Okay, let's take a look at the protection. It's really just a catch, step, and fire. Nobody around him. It's a very comfortable position to be in. Okay, he doesn't have to do anything with it. Watch his lower body with this throw. Front foot stays right here. There's just a rotation, right? It's just a rotation, nothing else. Very, very limited. He's probably made this throw a million times here. Great job getting the game winner. So the thing that I love about watching drives like this, not just the you know one or two plays that are good, but I'm talking about the full drive, is that you get a chance to see the sequence of plays, right? So it's that, and it's also how coordinators use their best players in order to get them the ball in situations where they, they need to win, right? The game is on the line, and they found a way to force the ball to their best player. Multiple times, they put Tyreek Hill and the number one position, they had him in the slot running that wheel route. They put him in the backfield. They lined him up in a ton of different ways. And this is where you can really see the difference in, in philosophy and the expertise from these coordinators at the NFL level. And it's really something special to watch and to study. So uh, if you're really, really into that type of stuff, I also have a course, the 21 day OC course that I have. It really dives into a ton of stuff. Uh, and this is just you know a small part of it, the, the play calling, the sequence, uh, of things and kind of analyzing how uh, you should go and approach different situations, right? That's one day in those 21 days. And I have 20 other days that cover a million other topics, well, 20 other topics, but it's really interesting. Uh, and I think that if you like this type of stuff, you're gonna absolutely love that type of stuff. So check it out. That's gonna be uh, in the description below. There's gonna be a link for it. So click on that, get signed up for it. You're gonna absolutely love it. Thanks for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.